Hello, uh, my name is Brendan O'Farrell. I'm the president and founding partner of DCN Diagnostics. And I'm Pat Vaughan. I'm the chief operating officer here at DCN and I run all the, our development programs. So the, the first round of tests that have been deployed for uh, SARS-CoV-2 or, or COVID uh, have been based on an old workhorse of molecular diagnostics, RT-PCR. Um, so this is a, a, a rather old technology at this point in time, but very effective uh, in detecting molecular products um, related to the expression of uh, viruses in humans. Yeah, and I guess the uh, the next round of testing then is uh, immune uh, antibody based testing, where you're either testing for uh, antibodies in, in a patient sample that have been raised against the infection of uh, of the virus, uh, or indeed uh, detecting the antigen directly, just like molecular uh, uses um, RT PCR to detect the presence of the virus. Now you can use antibodies that are raised against the virus to detect the presence of that antigen in a swab taken from the nasal passage. Yeah, so there's a, there's, there's a lot of terminology being discussed in a public forum, I guess, now that people are not used to hearing. Um, the terms immunoassay, for instance, or molecular diagnostic. Uh, an immunoassay is, is a test that's based on the use of uh, biological binding reagents, typically antibodies. Uh, most of the time these are used to detect proteins, either in the case of uh, CoV-2, a viral antigen, uh, or uh, to detect antibodies in the bloodstream uh, in serology tests. Yeah, and I guess molecular tests then are uh, detecting the actual nucleic acid of the infectious agent. So in this case, for uh, COVID-19, the virus, it's an RNA-carrying uh, virus, so the um, the the molecular tests are detecting the presence of that specific RNA in a, in a sample. So you can detect it by amplifying it with very specific uh, sequen uh, sequences of primers uh, that amplify that DNA and hence detect it. So I think the other, the other term we're hearing a lot is rapid diagnostic test. Um, and, and a rapid diagnostic test can come in many forms. The most common format is based on the use of a technology known as lateral flow technology. Uh, and people would be very, uh, very used to seeing it in the context of pregnancy testing, for instance. Um, and a rapid test is really one that's deployed at the point of care or at the point of need, where we take a sample um, and we do the test on the spot, so there's no need to send a sample back to a clinical laboratory for testing. So that's got a lot of advantages uh, in terms of fast results, obviously, but also, again, specifically in the context of the pandemic situation, uh, getting a result at the point of test means, or at the point of sampling, means that you don't lose control of the, the patient, if you will. So the patient doesn't leave the scene if they are infected uh, and have the potential to spread the disease. That's known immediately. So with the current generation of RT-PCR tests, uh, the testing actually requires sampling and then sending the sample to a central laboratory. Uh, it can take one hour, two hours, five hours to generate the result, but it can take two to five days to get that result from sample back to patient. And, you know, the other advantage of uh, RDT is obviously it's very easily deployed. So there's very, very little training. Uh, any, anybody can be trained very, very rapidly uh, to use this test. Um, and then the other, I suppose, the other uh, type of test that's out there, again, it can be in the form of a rapid test, is a serology test. So that can take a, a, a sample from a person. Um, this would be a blood sample in this instance. And it can detect if that person has been infected. Uh, if somebody is infected by the virus, their immune system is going to react to that and start generating antibodies in their bloodstream. Uh, so you can take a, an RDT and now check for the presence of antibodies that are specifically against the, the COVID-19 virus. Yeah, and, and as the, the testing methodology around the pandemic matures, one of the things that's going to happen more and more is serology testing, right? So right now we're very focused on suppression and, and uh, keeping people at a distance from one another to, to limit transmission. But the other major tool we have in that, uh, as well as in, as in case tracing, patient tracing, uh, is serology testing, obviously, because once somebody is exposed to the virus, they start generating antibodies very quickly. An IgM response develops uh, very rapidly, and then following that, an IgG response develops. If we can determine that somebody has IgM to the virus, uh, we can 
identify the fact that they've been exposed. Perhaps they're asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic. Uh, we can still identify the fact that they've been exposed through serology and in that way help to limit the spread. That's correct, yeah. So, I mean, testing for the antigen, be it molecular or be, uh, immunoassay, uh, if you eventually clear the virus from your system, those tests could potentially end up negative, whereas with the serology test, you can trace that person to see if they had been previously uh, infected. So that's going to be a very important use for serology uh, tests, as you say, uh, in the coming months uh, as, we, as we progress into this uh, outbreak.